Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. They were furious, frustrated, angry, insulted. They cried out, you must die. Here, this man had insulted them and their politics, their social dynamic, their economy and the way they spent their money, their morality and the way they lived their life, their lifestyle. He had done all of that by his simple words. He called them to admit their guilt. He called them out in front of everyone else and he said, you are responsible for everything that is happening around you. It is your fault. You need to change. Who was this man to say such things to them? What gave him the right to just stand in front of everyone and mock them in this way by saying that they were wrong? That their lifestyle was wrong? That the way they were living was wrong? That they needed to say they were sorry, repent, and change. Change who they were. He was just a messenger, but they hated him for the message, even though the message was simple. Listen to the word of your God, or you and this place will be no more. The Israelites in our first lesson hated hearing Jeremiah's message. And it was a very simple message given to him by God. And it wasn't just the ordinary people that were upset at Jeremiah, but the officials and the prophets, the supposed prophets, and the leaders of the time. They were so furious hearing someone stand up and say that they were wrong that they instantaneously demanded for him to be killed. They hated someone coming in and saying that the way they were living was not right. That they had to stand responsible for their actions. That they couldn't pretend that everything was just fine. And they really hated hearing this because what they wanted to hear was, you can do whatever makes you feel good. You can be happy. Oh, you made that mistake. It's no big deal. Don't worry about it. It's, you know, everyone does it. You don't need to feel guilty for that. It's okay. Don't worry about it. You're safe. Everything is fine. The things that are happening, they're not your fault. It's just, it's just how things go. And it has nothing to do with you and your actions. That's what they wanted to hear. But that is not what God sent Jeremiah to say. He was called to go to them to speak the true words of God. And this is exactly what he said. This is what the Lord says. If you do not listen to me and follow my law, if you do not listen to my servants and the prophets, whom I've sent to you again and again, though you have not listened, then I will make this house like Shiloh and this city an object of cursing among all the nations of the earth. It's pretty straightforward. And yet the only thing that the people see in that message is this guy has no right to say these things to me. This guy said something offensive and I didn't want to hear what this man had to say. And they didn't actually hear that if statement in there. If you listen to this word and turn back to your God who is the one giving this message, then you will be healed. And this will not happen. Instead, they focused on the offense and chose not to listen or deal with what needed to happen, painful, life-altering change. Change that comes from the Spirit of the Lord. Instead, they chose to kill the messenger. This man must die. You are furious because he undermined you and undermined your life and your lifestyle. 
He called you out in front of the people around you and said what you were doing was wrong. He called you to admit your sin, that you were guilty, that you are sinful, and the consequences you see around you are your fault, that what you are doing is not healthy. How could this guy say these things to you? Does he not know how complex your life is and all the puzzle pieces that go into the choices that you make and the way you live your life? How could he say such offensive comments and say that my lifestyle is wrong or the way I'm living and the choices I'm making are not right, that I am somehow being unchristian by the things I'm doing? How dare he, what gives him the right to say these things to me? How dare he judge me? How dare he tell me to change. Do you sometimes try to kill the messenger? A messenger who says those things to you and makes you feel that way. Do you hate hearing someone tell you, you need to change? I know I do, and I'm sure you do too. Just like the Israelites, we do the same thing. When someone comes into our life, even if they state very clearly, this is what the Lord says, when they come in and tell us that we're doing something wrong or that our behavior is showing us to be, that we look completely different than what a Christian should look like, that we are making choices based on things that have no source in the Bible, that we are acting like the evil world around us and the culture and because we want to fit in and it's the easy way to go. And that person dared and was brave enough to say something to us that our behavior and our sin was wrong. I think more often than not, we do attempt to kill that messenger. even though the messenger isn't the one giving you the message. And that message is so simple. We want to find offense in him. We want to find something wrong with the person saying it, but really we need to listen to the very simple message just like Jeremiah brought to the Israelites and God brings to us. Listen to my word or you and this place will be no more. This happens when we're at a party and we have too many drinks and we're getting belligerent and we have a friend from church or that we know from uh, a better circle of friends comes up to us and is brave enough to say, hey, you're embarrassing yourself and your behavior is not living your faith. And in the moment, we're angry because we're all excited and he's embarrassing us in that moment and we get angry and we yell at that person and we say, get out of my face, you're innocent and you're stupid, this is not the time, just leave me alone, you don't know what I'm going through right now. And we kill the messenger. It happens when we're consuming too much of the raunchy media and culture around us. Whether it's on Netflix or that certain movie that, or that TV show that someone recommended for us to watch because it has such a good story. But we see that the rating is M or worse on there and it's because of sexual content or graphic language or horrendous violence and constant terrible moral behavior. Sure, that might make you laugh. It might make you happy for a second and be pleasurable for that moment. And then some of your relatives come over and they see that you're watching this. They're like, how can you watch this? Especially with your kids around. Like, how can you have this content around? And you think, well, get out of here. You lived in a different age. You just don't realize this is the way the culture is now. This is how all the shows are. It's just part of life. And their response is, well, it it shouldn't be if you're listening to the Lord. We tell them, keep your comments to yourself. This is my house. We kill the messenger, even though we're hearing the word of God. It happens 
when we are starting a new school and we're really excited to fit in and as we get accepted into this big group that we think is really amazing and we want to be a part of because they do fun things, they're daring, and they, they do things that you've never had the privilege to do when your parents were right there around you and you get this chance to finally step out on your own and you think, I want to, I want to impress them, I want to show them that I can do the stuff they're going to do and they keep pushing you one step farther and one step farther and one step farther And before you know it, you're doing unspeakable things that you know if your parents ever found out, you wouldn't want to show your face in front of them ever again. And then by consequences or whatever it is, they do find out and they come up to you and they say, what you have done is wrong. And you know that because it's been hurting you. You can see all these consequences around you. What are you doing? You should stop hanging out with these friends, but don't worry, we love you and we will help you heal and deal with what's going on. And you scream and yell at your parents because they loved you? Because they cared about you and because you are hurting from your own consequences and you are so frustrated with yourself and you take it out on them and you don't want to admit that you are wrong. And so you kill the messenger. In these situations and so many in our lives, we... We instinctively don't like hearing that we're wrong. We don't like when anyone comes. We want to pick apart their life and say, who are you to tell me this? You did this and this and this and this. Instead of actually listening to the word of God that they were brave enough to bring to us. When they said, friend, you have a problem. You have tuned out your God. The very same one who died for you. You've stopped listening to his voice. And if you don't change, you will die. Not just in this life, but forever. Don't kill that messenger. Compelled by the word of God, came to you to tell you the same message that Jeremiah brought to the Israelites. Listen to the word of the Lord. Or else you and this place will be no more. Sin distorts, sin corrupts, and sin destroys. This will be a theme in our Fighting Temptation series. Sin is much more dangerous than we give it, the cre- give it credit for on a daily basis. And the way that it corrupts our behavior if we let it sit and pretend like it's not dangerous, they will continue to hurt you and your family and they will, it will destroy your soul. That's the bad news. But the beauty is that when we listen to messengers who bring us the word of God is that they don't just bring us that depressing and sad message that what you are doing is wrong and it's hurting you and the people around you, that it's destroying your soul. But when you listen to the word of God, what do you hear? You hear the beautiful weeping of Jesus as he stands before his golden city, Jerusalem. And he cries, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how long I have wanted to gather you in my wings, but you are not willing. That is your Savior crying to you. When someone brings you that word, that message that says, listen and turn and change, it is Jesus speaking through them. And he says that to you so that you Allow him to embrace you in his loving arms. To overwhelm you with his compassion so that he may lift you up from your death and carry you safely through this life into heaven with him. Jesus is the ultimate messenger who was killed. He is the messenger behind the messenger and he did take all of your hate and all of your pain and all of your rejection And he bore it on the cross and he did die exactly as God planned it to be. He died for you. He let you kill him, the messenger, 
because you refused to change as long as the multitudes around you in the past and in the future who have done things wrong and have made the wrong choices. He died for you. And that's not a guilt message that you should feel bad that he did all of this but you should appreciate the beauty of how much God loves you and how far he is willing to go to stand ready with his arms wide to gather you together like a mother hen gathers her chicks. Jesus is waiting with his arms spread by paying for your sins so that he is not separated from you, so that he can always stand here as the message goes out. And as soon as you listen to him, he embraces you. He heals you with his righteousness. He takes your sin away. He forgives you completely with the forgiveness he won on the cross. And then he gives you a new way to live. God loves you so much that he is not content to leave you in the lifestyle, in, in the bad behavior, in, in, in the easy life where no one, no one ever questions you, no one challenges you, no one says that you are wrong. He refuses to leave you in that hurting and broken and destroying yourself, he comes into that, he takes the mess, he sucks it out, he takes all that pain, and then he gives you his life. And he says, there is a better way. And it's following me. Because with me, you can get up the next day without that guilt of yesterday and the choices you made. You can get up without feeling that you are helpless and there's nothing you can do to overcome your own inadequacies. Because now you know that Jesus has taken that for you, that he is standing next to you, that he is walking you hand in hand so that today when you're in those same situations, even though it's hard, even though it's countercultural, you can make different choices. Trusting that the Lord, the God of the universe, when he says these things are wrong, That's because they are wrong and they are destroying you. And instead, he gives you these beautiful ways in the spirit that you may walk with him and live a new life, dwelling on much better things than what new show to watch or how can I be cool or what else can I do to make it through life, you have God's grace, you have his purpose for you that he has called you out of darkness into his light to be light for the people around you, to give comfort and hope and encouragement from the grace that you have from Jesus Christ. And you can be patient and loving and self-controlled and kind and gentle. All of these fruits of the spirit that come from knowing God and listening to his word, you are filled with that. Not so that life is always easy, but so that you can bear your burdens, you can bear your cross because Christ has carried yours and carried you. You make it through hardship. You make it through persecution. You're past your guilt and your sorrow and you have hope beyond death. We thrive in hardship, we rejoice in suffering, we bless those who persecute us, and we give thanks to God even with our dying breath. Because with him, there is a change worth having, a change that can happen by his grace. Let us strive to listen to that word so that we may be a blessing to everyone around us so that they too may know Jesus and the peace that only he can bring. Amen. Please rise.